guys, welcome to today, and I apologize so in advance that for the rest of their I brought you in in the middle of a fight. We are in the middle because of a fight. Like, it is getting dark and dirty down here at the Day by Day Farm. I am fighting against Sam and Gabby. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys. I want you guys to weigh in and tell me who is right, because <laughs> you guys are going to get to see what Sam is really like, I feel like. Okay, here it goes. Hi, Sam. Tell us what you, tell them what you were telling me. I was... Mainly saying that you don't take two kids to a show. Like a barn. Uh, yeah. And compete against the same level at the show. So if if Gabby and Kaylee were competing at a show together, at two foot six, and Kaylee was better than Gabby, I would not let Gabby go in that show because I know she was going to lose. I would put her in uh, one lower or one higher. So she's not competing against the same people in her barn. So essentially what Sam is saying here is that our barn should not take anybody to the show if they're going to be competing against each other because only the people who are the best in that barn, in that division, should show in that division. So say Gabby and Kaylee were both showing 2-3, and Kaylee was way better than Gabby at it, then about, Gabby is the only, or then if... But we're talking about high level shows and not schooling shows. Schooling shows, have at it. I'm talking about high level shows where you're spending lots of money to try and win something. But that's the whole thing. I, I don't believe in that. I believe that a show is an experience to make you better not you never ever go to a show even a high level show to win i don't know that's always what fiona taught us fiona won't even take somebody to a show if she thinks it's all about winning you would never go to a show <laughs> well winning. i do when i go to shows so it's yeah all about and winning. brandon likes to win and brandon does like to win okay so answer me this but you didn't say like only ho only yeah, well, schooling shows high level shows, shows where you're paying lots of money okay you so yeah. if you are so if you show on the a circuit and you are in a barn and there's three of you and you all sh and you all jump two six and two other girls are better at it than you do you not go to the show because you know you're gonna lose to them and this is what else i said i said you can never tell if you're gonna lose or if you're gonna win by who's better than you because judges are always being changed around you don't ever have like the same you don't always have the same judge every show and judges have a type of horse that they like type of rider that they like like all judges judge differently based on the same criteria and so you might win against your friend this time but then the next time they might win against you different judges different everything i think he's wrong you guys like i'm ready to pull his hair out and try and explain to him i don't want him teaching gabby that it that you can only that only something is only worthwhile doing if you win that's what you're saying, right? No, I'm not saying that. That is what you I said to me. Then. I'm just saying that. That's what I agree. For so that a school yeah, should not bring crazy. more than more than two or three people per per. No, you said only one person in each only division. One person in each event. Yeah. No, I think they, they should have bring one. different riders, one in each one. That's right. Yeah, that's what so I'm that saying. So that nobody spends. And I said that riding is an individual sport, so it's not a team sport. So a barn should bring as many people as they bring, and you compete against yourself. It's not about the barn competing. It's about you competing. You're the one that pays the money. Anyway, comment below. And if you're an A-level rider, I'm anxious to hear what your barn does. How does your barn decide who shows what at each division? And yeah, lots of people, I think, do believe what Sam believes. I just think that it's a terrible thing to think and a terrible thing to believe and a terrible thing to teach your shows? children. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna ask Sophie right now. All right, Sophie, come on over here closer so that nobody can see all the mess of our work Daddy, area. You were going to a show and you and your friend were both gonna show cross rails and your friend was a better rider than you. Would you stay in cross rails? Would you go to a different level? Have fun, don't care if you win. My you child. Needs to win. You just have to have fun. That's right. And you can hang out with your okay, friend. Okay, so now what? Like, you stand beside your friend in like the judging. And you support and her. And you say, good job, you like, you got this. You got Showing this. is not just about money and ribbons. It's about learning how to it's be about a- about ribbons. 
It's not about ribbons. Okay, about Sophie, winning. what oh, if you were showing on the A circuit and you paid $500 to go to the show and if you won, you were gonna win $300 and your friend was better than you? Would you still- I don't care if I win. What if you would lose $500 yeah. of your own money? And? Why waste yeah. your money when you know you're gonna lose? Because you get a lot more from a show than just from you get more just experience. Yeah. Okay. And horses, no, I'm phoning Fiona. I'm calling Fiona. Okay, I'm phoning Fiona. Let's see who's right. Oh. Okay, I have just an important, really quick question. We're all in a family war right now because Sam says that for the age shows especially, but if you belong to a barn and the barn is taking like three girls to a show, they should never compete in the same division because then they're competing against each other and the barn is doing them a disservice by putting them in the same show because not none of the, not all of them have a chance to win. No, we, do, we compete in the same classes all the time. Yeah, you compete in the same classes, but why? Because sometimes the girls are the same level and that's the only class they can compete in, so they have to compete against each other. I say that we should just go there and have fun. So Sophie and I believe that the show is a get, is about an experience and not necessarily winning. But Sam says in the A levels you're competing for like money and bigger prizes and stuff, so it's more important and you're spending a lot of money. So when it, you when you move up to the top of the, you are actually aiming for the top. You're that's your goal. You are being competitive. However, if you're going and not having fun and not enjoying yourself and not gaining anything from it and there's no point in going. Okay, so Sam's right in that department, and I get that, but Correct. as a barn, do you not let two people compete against? So if you have one girl that's not as good as the other, do you only let one girl compete? No. If they both want to spend the money, then they go both go. It's, it's totally up to the person at that point. And I've taken, like when we go to Trillium, I take girls in the same division all the time. I had uh, a couple girls can be in the two sixes together, and I had a couple girls can be in the two nines together. So what I said is that just because one girl is better than another at school, like in the school, their judges are so variable. Like they have horses that they like better. They have riding styles that they like better. So just because you're better in school doesn't mean that you're not going to win sometimes. Like when we go to shows. Well, and, and you've got to consider that that day you may ride better than the other person. Yeah, you might. Yeah, exactly. So, who's right every here? Judge, every judge judges differently each day of the week. I mean, it all oh. depends on how they're feeling and what they're looking at and what's in the ring. And then you have to counteract that every rider rides differently every time they get in the saddle and every horse rides differently under every time they go. So, here's my question. Is it wrong for a coach to take more than one student on the A circuit and put them in the same division? No. Would you have five people doing the, the same division? Would you have five people doing the same division? Yep. If they're all at the same level, then yes. You would be doing a disservice to your students if you had riders who were capable of competing in a higher or lower division and would do better in a lower or higher division and you put them all together because you wanted to make your life easier, that's a disservice. Yeah. However, if you are all at the same level and they all are due to compete at that same level, then no, that's exactly what I would do. And essentially, it's not the judge's, or it's not the coach's decision at all, is it? It's the parent's decision. Correct. Okay, so you guys just heard from Fiona. Fiona basically said, Laura and Sophie, you are right. Um, so I Ben, so okay, like you guys are, you guys are seeing the competitive side of the day by day farm. Okay, so now I reached out to my friend. Her name is. We're going there to win. That's it. We're going there to win. <laughs> That's no, Brandon. We're going there to have fun. Yeah, fun. Okay, comment I mean, below. Win at the same comment time. below right now. If you go to a show, do you go there to have fun and hang out with your friends, or do you yeah. go to win? Win it. Or or don't do it. Okay, it's so all about the ribbons. Okay. I mostly just go there to hang out with my friends. So I reached out to a friend of ours. Her name is Allie T, and she shows in, on the A circuit. She shows the highest level you can go. And her horse a couple of years ago won horse of the year in the A levels. Like she's really high up there. And I said to her the same question. This was her answer. Nope. At the A level, we have well, we have groups of kids of the same age, all in the same divisions, and that's just part of the camaraderie. So, yes, there's competition, but uh, kids from the same barn are always in the same classes, uh, and that's just how it goes. Band. For example, we have about five 12 to 13 year olds in our barn and all of them compete in the 12 to 13 equitation, and then the children's hunters together. Uh, we have a group about of about 
for 14 to 15 year olds and again the same scenario I compete with my friends from my same barn uh, in a division and yes we are competing against each other but we still root for each other so there you have it there you have it Laura for the win Laura and Sophie for the win no because I said root for each other yeah you do you root for each other and and like Fiona said just because you ride better than somebody else that you ride with every single day doesn't mean that they won't have a bad day or that you won't have a super day or that the judge won't prefer your style over their style so anyways they're still doing school homeschool uh, but this was just an uh, argument that we were having as a family and I wanted to involve you guys and I really am curious to see what you guys think. One thing I know about you guys is that you will throw a lot of different points into each discussion that we have. So anyway, uh, sorry for putting you through that but it had to be done and now we're going to head down to the barn and work with our girls. I can't wait to show you guys what we're doing today. We are headed down to the barn um, but first I want to answer a question that somebody asked me the other day. And it is, does Daisy respond to whistles? So recently I bought two whistles from Amazon, a dog whistle and then a regular whistle. They're supposed to be like quality, whatever quality you need for dogs. Like they're supposed to be loud quality. Well, anyways, so um, right now we're gonna try and see a test to see what happens. The dogs all think we're going down to the barn. So they're all here. So you need to take them somewhere and I'm gonna blow the whistle and see if they come. She's Get off that couch. We've been training her, no couch. And she's <laughs> sneaky, Dalmatians are sneaky. Okay, so they're gone, so I'm gonna blow the dog whistle first. Clearly, none of them came for that. So now I'm gonna blow the louder whistle and see what happens. Plug your ears if you don't want to hear it. All right, it seems like nobody's listening. Except for Daisy. Seemed like she heard that. Here, wait, wait, come here. Sylvie, you take the whistle in the other room and blow it and see if she comes to you. Imagine she heard that. Okay, hold on. Are you ready? Yeah, wait, she ran. Blow it. Okay, so I think she went because Ruby went. We're gonna put all the other dogs in their bed and then do it without them so that Daisy, so we can get a better idea if Daisy can hear. But the she, weird thing is- She sees me holding the whistle to my mouth and she's like staring at oh, me. Oh, but this may, so one thing about Molly is that even though she's the most incredible puppy ever, she is a chicken, she's a chicken. She heard that whistle blow and she ran and hid. That's what she does. All right, so go over there. I'll draw their attention to me. Okay, oh, wait. Okay, blow. She's going to hide. As soon as I did that, she like looked Okay, up. do it loud. <gasps> did you guys see that? <laughs> that could happen. Sam, it could work. It almost broke my ears. Okay, do it again. Wait, come here, look at me. Just wait, attention. come here. Daisy, okay. She looked. She doesn't, see, this is why we can't ever tell. This is why we had the test done. And the test was because you can't, because she, she's anticipating. She doesn't know what we're trying to do right now. So she's looking to, to see. Okay, go in that kitchen area. Just draw her attention to me. I have no treats, but okay, listen. She's running because she watched. Ah, okay, Sophie, you go upstairs. So I'm gonna try and keep her from knowing what's happening. Don't look, don't look, don't look. I know she's, she's, uh, she's, she's gotten to the point where she notices it always. She pays attention to Sophie all the time. She notices if she leaves the room. So just wait, she already knows that she's gone upstairs. Oh, maybe not. Okay, go ahead. Blow again. Blow again. Blow again. All the other dogs are howling. 
So this is the biggest indication if she actually can hear. If she can hear it, she doesn't know where it's coming from, which... She's looking for Sophie, that's what she's doing. Do it again. Yeah, she doesn't hear it. She's just upset that Sophie's gone missing. She can feel the vibration of Sophie coming down the stairs. Did I go missing? That kind of answers your question, like how do deaf dogs adjust to their world? Like she Why pays am attention. I, so pale? I think it's the camera settings. Okay, so I've um I've been being really nice on like Adami and stuff. I've been getting ox boxes. Ox, bo ox. I can't talk. Ox boxes and um giving them away for free, like seeing what pet was inside and giving the pet away for free. Because I want to know what was inside of it. And um I hatched a cracked egg for myself and God's like I think God was like well she's been really nice so I'm gonna give her something good back and I got a unicorn oh that's awesome it is all icy out here I think all the skating rinks are probably melting everything is melting it's the spring melt in February <sighs> I almost died <laughs> I don't know who gets my dr my flair for the dramatic. Hey! <laughs> I am so obsessed with show season this year. Like, don't ask why I have school. I just want to go and have fun. I just want to go and enjoy it. And going on the trillium circum this circuit this year, we have to travel. This is gonna be fun, you guys. Like, no matter what way you look at it, it's gonna be fun. Oh, hello! <laughs> Nice of you to run up to me. So uh, basically this new part of the course is going to be working on the boomerang. If you guys don't know what the boomerang is, Gabby, I'm gonna get you to show them what the boomerang is. This is one of mine and Penny's not good things. Okay, so this is the boomerang. It's when you get, oh my God, goodness. You should give her a treat, oh my gosh. Well, we know the gifted pony in the group. Okay, give her a treat, cause that was fantastic. That's ridiculous! Yeah, I need to work on this. So, <laughs> so basically the boomerang is to like send them around something. So now she's doing the figure eight. This is what we just learned today. And there's my curious pony over there. My horse is curious. I like that about her. Penny's mad because I'm not working with her. She's kind of been in a bad mood the last couple of days. So basically that's what we're gonna be working on. I might have to actually go back a little and work on other things and that's a part of the course too. I like to do a refresher with her and get her working and thinking before I start something new. You take my life for granted Say a bunch of stuff you never meet, yeah So Gabby's gonna show you what we what we're doing. So she's sending her around, yeah, booming, ringing her back, and weaving her. Uh oh, weaving her. So that's the step two. The first one was a figure eight. She's like that. We're good. You have to guide her with the cheek hold. Okay. So you should probably work on the boomerang more before you add, like the figure eight before you add in the weave. So what Gabby's doing now is called no, the weave. I was figure eight. I just tried to make her run home. 
Oh, well, don't try to make her run home because when she runs home, everybody runs home and it's not safe. Not fun. Okay. Well, let's go over here to circle two. Let's see how Sophie's doing. Okay. My horse over there looking grouchy. I feel like I miss more practices than you guys. That's great. Good. You can give her a treat in the middle even. Yeah, they both got it. Like, that's insane. Like, that's amazing. So eventually we're going to learn to do like seven different types of boomerang things. Like, that's fantastic. Okay, Gabby, help me with my horse then. I know you're hungry, I know it's lunchtime, and you want lunch, but this is the best time for us to work with you. So here's the deal, you have to behave, and we have to work hard on this, because we don't want to fail. We can't fail, Penny. You're, you're in the competitive family now. Okay, we have to win this. There's a hunt attack happening. There's a bird up there. There's a bird up there, and our cat is trying to catch it. Two. Two birds. You guys see it? Okay, so Gabby's done and she said she needs a day for it to sink in. So that's one thing that we've learned is that it sometimes takes them time to figure it out. Like we struggle, 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 and then we'll come back two days later and all of a sudden they're genius at it. Except for Gracie, who's exceptional, which I always knew Gracie was exceptional. But I'm proud of Penny and I'm proud of Willow. Like, I feel like smaller, like ponies, you know how pony tooed? I feel like ponies are better at thinking and figuring things out. I swear the horses enjoy this so much. The girls went up to the house and Gracie stood in the middle of the arena, even though I'm, ooh, I'm raking the arena to get all the hay and stuff out of it. It's kind of warm out, so I can kind of do a little bit of work down here. She stood in the middle of the arena and watched this door after Gabby left. She watched Gabby leave and just stood there watching. Like, I, I really think she especially enjoys it. I think Penny gets confused. Like, the weirdest thing about doing Liberty with Penny is that when she learns something, and we move on, she forgets the old thing. She's exactly like me, you guys. <laughs> like me and Sophie. She's a perfect match for me. Don't you know that you're beautiful?